Okay. Uh, my thing was kind of lagging there, so I don't know how, silent, how long that was for silent for. Um, but yeah, here we are back again. Uh, I feel like every time I make a video, it's like, oh, it's been a while since we've been here. Um, but yeah, so here we are. Um, obviously, Strays is out, and uh, a lot of people have been summoning for him already, and they all kind of, you know, because when you're on YouTube, right, the, the idea is you want to summon on the first day so that you can have the video, and that's when people are going to be searching up. Uh, when he comes, you know, when he comes out is going to be when people are, are most actively looking for content about him. Um, but I was kind of thinking about it. I mean, I don't have enough to pity him anyway, so that's kind of why we're like, I was hesitant to do it anyway, because we might, I might not even get him. Uh, and I was also kind of thinking like, oh, I'd rather wait for like another uh, rotation. But for one, the next rotation is Ball and uh, Violet Talisman, which I don't need either of. Now, this one's pretty good. This one would be pretty interesting for um, Violet himself, I think. Evasion, you get 30% of evasion off of this, plus it's 30, you get 65 evasion, you're 5 off of um, what uh, Remnant Violet is with Moonblade. Uh, he actually, he can actually, one of the things that's, that's interesting to think about with Violet Talisman and, um, what's his name? Uh, oh, actually his name is Violet, I was, is it? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, it's green, yeah, Remnant Violet, Green Violet. Um, Anyway, one of the interesting things about this with him specifically is he can actually make quite a good use of this because every time he dodges, um, he counters, and then when he counters, he gets a CR boost, where Remnant Violent cannot. So you get kind of forced to run speed on Remnant to make good use of this. Um, but uh, regular Violet himself, uh, he has so much CR boosting every time he counters that this actually ends up being a lot more beneficial, which I thought was kind of interesting. Um, it's just interesting to see that uh, they kind of they changed him a little bit to make him more useful to his own artifact, which is pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, so 30%, 6, 30% attack and 30% uh, evasion. But the problem being that, let's go back here. The problem being that you have, for one, you have to get this at max. And then for two, you have to, um, the 30% is still not as big as the attack buff. However, it's better to have this if you pair him with an attack buff. Though you can always guarantee that and, you know, so, you know. But yeah, the, the biggest gains come from this with the attack buff, and then it takes too long to stack all three of them anyway, so, you know, it is what it is. Uh, but yeah, so the rest of these are, are alright. So this, this rotation is kind of whatever, I really don't care enough about it. I actually want uh, Border Coin, because it's pretty good on um, on uh, the, the Fire Nuker uh, Inferno Kawazu. Uh, you know, 10% speed and 15% attack is pretty good. Uh, every time he triggers that, though problematically, a lot of times it's like he's only going to get one S3 off, which is all you need basically, but still, uh, it's important to consider. Um, but anyway, yeah, so the rest of these are kind of like whatever, who cares? Uh, I already have Max Imprint, all the rest of these, and I have, I, well, I kind of need copies of this, but anyway. Uh, so I just decided, you know, I'm just going to pull for him. If I don't get him, fine, I'll, I'll save up some more bookmarks and then we'll, we'll try to get him later. Uh, but yeah, so we're going to pull the moon, Moonlight Summon just in case we, uh, for some reason, get him here. And of course, we can get him. Uh, Mercers are what I need. I think I need Inos too. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna pull for Strays and I'll probably talk about them afterwards and, and we'll go from there. Uh, the Golden Bees, I'm probably gonna save them to get imprints on himself uh, using Transmit Stones because there's not a whole lot that I need to pull for in terms of Mystic Summons or uh, Moonlight Summons. There's not a whole lot of like ML units I need anymore other than like Kawazu, but I'm not gonna like, just get them randomly, so it's fine. Uh, and we'll do uh, we'll do my daily summon here. Oh, and I also have that um, free five star ticket that we just pulled as so rec room war. Right, let's go take a look at what five star I get. Actually, wouldn't be too bothered. Actually, now that ooh, I better go fix that. I'll be right back. Okay, so let's see. Um, what was I was saying I, one of the I'd rather I really kind of want now that he's like I've been having a lot of fun with regular Violet and I mean like a dupe would be pretty nice. Hey, I got shoe. I never had shoe before, so there you go. I didn't need to pull for her because I didn't have the gear for her anyway. Uh, problematically, is uh, shoe is pretty good for a lot of people because a lot of people have like a lot of people pulled for Alencia, and when you pull for Alencia, she's so good that you kind of want perfect gear on her. So there's gear that you put her on when you first got her, and then you kind of upgrade it over time, get better pieces and all that stuff, and you have a lot of leftover pieces, and you know. Shoe comes out and she's got you know decent Alencia level gear, uh, not as good as she is right. Obviously you know people want to put her their prime gear on Alencia. Um, 
But then she comes out and then she has a lot of leftover gear that didn't work on Alencia necessarily. You can put it on her instead. And she's, you know, similar level of power. Uh, so that's kind of why she, you know, turned out pretty good for a lot of people. But yeah, so it's pretty cool to, to have that. Uh, just for, for one, for the sake of completion, uh, it's pretty cool. But yeah, so let's, uh, I might, I'll probably just do some 10 pulls um, just to not waste too much time. We'll uh, let's see if I get lucky off of any of these. Like I said, border coin is pretty cool. Would be pretty cool to get. Uh, Ray, Ray would be fine, but I'm not gonna. I already have a Ray, and I'm not gonna like build my Ray because I, I can't be asked to care enough. Because I already have uh, DJ Basar, and while DJ Basar is not like 100% the same as Ray, they generally fill a similar purpose, so it's not that big a deal. Uh, let's see what that is. Oop! So I got Ray. Um, so Ray's fine. Uh, I'm just probably just gonna save copies of him until like ML Ray comes out, and then I can just uh, go from there. Um, so we didn't get a whole lot here. The Caladra I already have a uh, two like two maxed out copies of that, so that's fine. Uh, this isn't like you really can't lose here because either you wow this is horrible because either you pull strays or um, either I pull strays uh, or I reduce the pity for uh, whatever comes after strays. See what we get here. I think Strays is going to be pretty good. Um, one of the things that the, the most interesting part about Strays himself is uh, he's got three. He's got two AOE attacks and a single and a, and a single target attack. Uh, but with his S three, his AOE attack, his primary AOE attack, with that S three, he does S one like not S one. He does single target damage. So basically, he hits everyone for about like six thousand something like that, six five thousand. Uh, but then on top of that, he just one-shots one unit. He has the possibility to do that, right? That's kind of what makes him so strong, is ability to AoE with strong single target damage as well. Uh, and then hopefully with a bit of tankiness as well. Uh, I'm not really sure what kind of build to run on him currently. I know a lot of people are thinking about um, like a counter build because his S1 gives him CR. Um, well, I don't know about a lot. I know I know a few people who are. I don't know. I don't think that's the way to go with him because a lot of people like, like if you take a look at counter Ravi, right? The reason you run Ravi on counter, uh, let's skip these until we get to something interesting. The reason you run uh, Ravi on counter is because her S one does a lot. It heals her, gives her fighting spirit to fuel her, um, to fuel her S three, and it also uh, has the ability to stun or the the chance to stun, right? So that's kind of why. Something like Ravi makes sense, right? Um, there's a border coin. Finally got one. So for, not only for collection purposes, but also you know, for useful purposes. Let's skip everything. Okay. Um, but yeah, so like his S1, like there's a reason you don't like... Again, one of the other people that ran it, like, you know, some someone similar to, to his... Oop, there we go. We'll see if this is him. Come on. Nope. So it's Roman. Oh, wait a minute. What's going on? What does that mean? I have no idea what's going on here. Wasn't that purple? Am I high? I'm going to have to look that back on the recording. <laughs> uh, I'm losing my mind here. I don't know what that was. There we go. So I kind of got it out of order. Night Commander. Uh, which again, it was pretty good because I didn't have Roman before, uh, and I kind of wanted him. Um, he's not as I don't know. It, it's hard. Like he he's pretty good, but the fact that his uh, uh, silence isn't uh, guaranteed, it's a seventy five percent chance, something like that. Uh, let's see, seventy five percent chance to silence for two turns. It's all right, um, but yeah, I mean, he'll end up missing a silence on someone or two, maybe sometimes even two people, and then you just get kind of. Uh, job there and then the fact that like if you see him on defense you can't run him on defense because then you just run uh what's her name what's her name um rowana because then this triggers rowana and then everybody just gets like a million cr off of him uh yeah it's just really hilarious to watch uh this is pretty good you can't reduce his um combat readiness so yeah oh yeah so let's keep going <laughs> that was weird i don't know because it like as soon as the yeah it was like a weird delayed reaction it was like letting me know that somewhere in there it was a purple a purple uh shine but uh, i wasn't on that specific summon and we just got the uh, the soldier guy 
Ah, I can't forget. Our Terranor Guard is what we got. That was funny. Uh, so this looks like we're not going to get strays uh, in this batch, which is fine, because there's still, what, like 500 more uh, Mystics from that daily login event, and then there's like another 500 from the um, from the Abyss, which I haven't cleared all of. I haven't cleared all the new Abyss floors. Like, the new Abyss came out, and I just couldn't be asked, because it was already so irritating. Uh, we'll do this last 10 uh, single, just for the sake of it. Time. Uh, but yeah, so Broman is gonna have. I'm just gonna take him out and have like uh, triple S because I have that many uh, Romans already saved. Uh, so it's looking like we're probably not gonna get him, but like I said, we'll, we're reducing the the pity counter. And you know, granted, do I think anyone's gonna come out that's gonna necessarily uh, top him in terms of strength? Probably not, but still worth considering worth uh, saving. This could be him. If I got another Broman, this is going to suck, though. Ooh, we got him. There we go. It's a good thing I went with uh, single summons there. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I wouldn't really sad not to have gotten him. Yeah, I would have been kind of sad not to have gotten him. Um, just because, I mean, it is, it is strays after all. <laughs> We've all been waiting for this guy since uh, the first time we saw him, we were like, do we want that guy? So, oh, there we go. And we'll save for the next pity, and um, that's kind of disheartening. I'm just going to pull one more just to get rid of that. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I'm not I'm not, I'm not down with that. All right, so there we go. We'll, we'll, uh, we have one more for the next pity. Um, yeah, so there, I mean, there's that. Uh, let, let's talk about him a little bit. Uh, if I can go here. That's not the, oh, let me just click on him. Uh, let's see. So, again, going back to builds and whatnot. His, I think his build is going to be kind of strange. It's going to be kind of hard. Um, because you do need a lot of attack on him. Now, you can get a decent amount of attack with, like, a speed set. Not have him, like... you know. I mean, he, you know, you don't want him, like, competing for first turn. But, uh, like, speed immunity would be pretty good. Kind of have him similar to, like... Uh, what's her name? Uh, Little Queen Charlotte. Um, but I think... I don't know. It, it just feels like his S1 doesn't do enough to merit um, just going for a counter set. But, you know, I could be wrong. Um, the thing with, um, yeah, so, I don't know. Uh, the S2 is actually is a lot better than people might give it credit for, just because, um, ignores fracture resistance. This spells two buffs, right? Because, uh, these days, there's a lot of people running a lot of buffs in Arena, like, people like, uh, Maid Chloe, people like, um, like, Crow, people like, uh, you know, even, even ML Crow, uh, or, what, what's her name? Like, oh, what's her name? Uh, you guys know the one. Um... The end, right? There's a lot of people running these, these like lots of debuffers, and one of the things that they do is they usually take a step towards that is getting rid of Landy, because Landy is a huge problem with that. Um, but you know, a lot of times when I'm playing RTA and I made it to champ last season, I didn't make it to legend because I don't got that kind of time. Uh, when I don't got the time, the kind of money, or the what's the word? I guess patience, because uh, RTA gives me like I don't know, <laughs> it gives me fury. Uh, it's not something I, I enjoy playing a lot of, so uh, for the time being, uh, I got, you know, champ is as high as I could go. Is I, is this, well, I mean, yeah, it probably is as high as I could go. Let's, um, to be honest with you, even if I wanted to get to Legend, I don't think I would have made it to Legend. Um, but it's a combination of not wanting to and, and also not having the resources for that, so uh, that's that. Uh, but anyway, a, a, as, far as, I was, as far as I was in Champion... Um, Alencia is still a very strong pick. Now she's fallen out of the meta, a meta a lot, and a lot of people don't. I don't see her. No one chooses her. No one drafts her. No one does anything. Like I'll pick Maid Chloe, and then uh, you could just bring in Alencia and then have her uh, strip everything. Uh, but no one does that. I'm not entirely sure why. I'm you know I'm not gonna speculate as to why not, why or why not. Uh, but it's important to realize that like a good stripper is 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 just you know very powerful especially with the ability to damage and ignore effect resistance like without having a soul burn like it's you know it's dumb it's it's, it's no other way to say it it's just it's really good it's strong um basar is another one that comes to mind where people like they'll have like a draft of non-debuffers and then they'll just throw basar in there and then usually just ban the basar and then you're fine if, if if you're running a lot of debuffers but for one i run alencia instead of basar because uh you know i'm not a degenerate and you know i'm you know I have some sort of self dignity, so I don't run bizarre. Um, but now the fact that Strays also has this strip on him is pretty cool, and the fact that like Broman, like I, I won't run bizarre, but Broman is pretty fun to run. So I might like build a build up a Broman and then have him be like um, 
just kind of have him there. If someone's drafting a lot of buffs and I can't bring Landy, I'll just bring him in, uh, have him do some CC, some CC and stripping, you know, maybe run him on like, I mean, ideally you want to run him on Abyssal Crown, um, but I feel like I might like him better on the, um, the what's it called? How you know what it is? The um, Ayala's Violin for more strips because the S1 leads into S2 or this one has an additional S1 which triggers and then it just AOE strips, but the the um, the stun off of that might be a lot better so who knows um but yeah so you know pretty good uh the the ability to strip that's pretty good so maybe him and, and brum would be pretty fun to use um but then of course the, the the main reason we're all here is because his s3 with an attack buff with about 4k damage 300 4k attack 300 crit damage does 21,000 on someone who ignores defense. Like if they have, if the trigger, the conditions are met for this, that person is going to take about 21,000. Now, if he has an attack buff, which you kind of want to run him with attack buff as, 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 as much as possible, you want that to happen. Now uh, he's going to hit someone for 41k. Uh, and really there's no one in the game who can reach that kind of HP or anything like that. Like even, yeah, th there's no one who's going to survive that basically. So you're going to one shot either a MLCC and ML Crow. Uh, regular crowd um i held you'll you'll cc um uh, what's his name you'll you'll destroy uh uh what's his name dark corvus you know <laughs> it's done i've done this so long i guess it's been a while since i've done this <laughs> i'm like forgetting all this stuff um but yeah so no one no one is going to survive this where the conditions meet uh which is basically you know and you know he has attack buff so that's that's important to, to realize is how dangerous this move is. It basically just makes some comps free, especially when you're playing now. You're playing on, um, you take him into Guild War or something. If like if you see a CC, uh, an MLCC there, uh, there it's it's basically over. <laughs> like you won, because MLCC is gonna die one shot. Everyone else is gonna take so much damage from this, not be able to do anything because he's got invincibility and then take an S two to the face. And now there's only two units, so the damage on this is gonna be even higher. Uh, and then you can soul burn it probably by then because the other units have gone or whatever you, you want to do from there. And then you just do it again. Um, yeah, Strays is uh, actually pretty ridiculous. Uh, what I'm not sure what artifact you'd want to use on him. Um, I have, have been thinking about running him on um, Sigurd Scythe just to make... Like, if you start soul burning his S2, right, and then you can just do it next turn... Um, he can basically heal off of that. Like AOE S2 damage is gonna basically heal up his full life bar if you keep doing it back to back. Um, so yeah, that that might you know I've been thinking about running Sigurd Scythe. If he ever gets low, you just you know S2 and then there's all your damage. Or if you S3, you don't have to go into S2. You can just S1 until you get into Sigurd range, and then you can S2 anyway. Um, but yeah, I mean uh, some people are running Hellcutter, which I think is fine, but Hellcutter. Kind of has the same thing that like if you run it on if you run it on uh, what's her name those of you who run your um uh what's her name M uh, lqc little queen charlotte for those of you who run her on uh hell cutter you know how much survivability she lacks because like if you run her on sigurd scythe it's like night and day like she has three is heals back and then uh, when her turn comes back and if she's on Sigurd Scythe range, her S1 basically just gives her like a third of her health back and then she just lasts longer so you can get another S3 off. Um, and an S3, yeah, I don't know, it's just, Sigurd Scythe is just way better on, on, on her, I, I think, anyway. But a lot of times, like, if you build, like, depend, it depends on what your build is. If you want her to last, like, a decent amount of time, you want Sigurd Scythe, but if you want her to just, like, her job is to come in here, one-shot a guy, and if she survives, good, if she doesn't, then, you know, fine. Um, then, you know, Sigurd Scythe, you don't really need it. But yeah, there's not a whole lot that I think you can run on Strays, um, personally. You can't run Uberius' Tooth. Let's, let's just go look at the at the artifacts just to have more uh, a more clear visual here. Uh, let's see. So I'm at 80, 87, and 88. Uh, let's go look at the Warrior stuff. So Sigurd Scythe, I think, is pretty good. Uh, Durandal might be alright, but for one, you're wasting, like, the problem with Sigurd Scythe is he's not, it's usually not going to trigger before he takes his turn. And if it does, he's probably going to die if he's less than 75. He's, like, if they got him down to less than 75 before he takes his turn, chances are they have a bunch of other stuff they're about to do, which will kill him anyway. So it's not that big a deal. Um, Guberius' Tooth uh, only works on single target attacks, so that's not very useful. Border Coin, he doesn't have any non-whatever uh, attacks. Junkyard Dog, again, no, no real thing there. 
this looks kind of interesting. Um, <laughs> yeah, if you can imagine to find some way, I don't know, just S3, get invincibility, loop all the way back around, and then S3 again. <laughs> Two turns of invincibility. I just that's just that's just mean. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean this could work on him, but uh, the twenty percent chance is kind of like not that good. Uh, one one that I think that competes with Sigurd Scythe, and it usually does compete with Sigurd Scythe, considering like some of the best bruisers are like, do you want to run Sigurd Scythe? Do you want to run um, Draco Plate? Now with Little King Queen Charlotte, you can't run Draco Plate because it doesn't stack with her built-in crit reduction. Um, so that's kind of the only reason she doesn't run Draco Plate. Otherwise, I think she would be good for it. But uh, he can run Draco Plate pretty well, uh, just because it gives him uh, more crit damage and, and crit hit resistance. Um, but Sigurd Scythe is a little more valuable just because you want more attack on him for you know to, to, to proc all his stuff. Um, but you know, either way, I think they're both pretty good. Um, Merciless Glutton, I don't even know what this thing does. When someone dies, he gets yeah, he gets effectiveness, and yeah, it doesn't matter. Uh, Cradle of Life debuffs, and ah, nobody cares. Uh, this thing does something useless, effectiveness 50%. Yeah, so that's also useless. Uh, Champion's Trophy stuns. It's alright, I guess. Snow Crystal uh, increases effect resistance. And uh, you get CR boosted when they not crit you. Uh, so yeah, like I said, none of these are very useful. Like, damage if the enemy is granted a barrier. It's alright, you know, it's fine. Um, and I guess if you want... Oh, you know who could be pretty good with that? If you want LQC to absolutely like destroy MLCC in a one shot from full HP to nothing, I think this might be able to do it. Yeah, I wonder. That's actually kind of interesting to think about. Um, not only that, like you'll S three her and probably just zero to hundred to zero her in like one shot. Um, but also, it'll make it like because everyone else is, already has a buff from the MLCC. When she takes her turn again, she'll do even more damage to everyone. Uh, so if you if, if if you use your LQC and all she does all you bring her in is when they choose uh, MLCC or if if you don't have an RTA ready one and you just have like a, a Guild War LQC or a you know a regular standard arena LQC and you just you know you pick your spots with her and it's like oh I only bring her in for M MLCC usually if you're noticing that that's the that's the reason that artifact might be pretty interesting um, just to just absolutely like destroy her <laughs> that sounds so messed up anyway. Uh, and then you get uh, effect resistance and defense, which is again it's useless. So, so far we're basically down to Draco Plate and Secret Scythe, and I think Secret Scythe is a little better. Or you know, Creation and Destruction if it was worth anything. Uh, but twenty percent is kind of lame. So I don't know. It's up to you. It's up to whatever you want to like. Do you want to gamble on that twenty percent? Because with that twenty percent triggers, like damn, like, <laughs> like that's messed up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like so, it's it's important to weigh them. Uh, but yeah, Hellcutters is all right. Uh, Funnily enough, the person I saw running her, running him on Hel on Hellcutter, was also running Counter Set, which I'm not sure what that was about. Because if you run him on Counter Set, then uh, then he whenever he counters, he resets the the Hellcutter passive. So you know whatever you know, that's that's whatever that is. So you know, take that as you will. Um, Crimson Seed, all these other like debuff helpful ones, I think are. Like, if you run him into 2 debuffs, you already lost. This is my problem with this. I don't think he's going to, like... I don't think clearing debuffs or giving him effect resistance is very useful. And he has too many... He has too high an attack stat uh, requirement. Uh, Elf's Fest is alright, but the speed you get out of this is kind of worthless. And um, the attack percentage is pretty good, but you have to get him down to, like, 25% to get 50% attack. Uh, and Sigurd Scythe, you have to get him down to 50 and you get the 25, so I mean, it's fine. Plus you get the lifesteal, which gives him more survivability, so I don't know, I, I feel like that's way better. The, the problem with Elf's Fist, right, is that Sigurd Scythe exists. And Elf's Fist, like, Sigurd Scythe is just Elf's Fist, but better, because you get speed off of this, but no one cares about the speed, like, who cares? Um, this one was actually kind of interesting, I, I thought. Yeah, so this effectiveness is worthless, but if you're running strays, chances are he's gonna one-shot someone. So if you one shot someone, it means that when you come back to your turn again after you've got invincibility, you have attack buff now, uh, and your S two will do a lot more damage, right? So, yeah. Chances are, here's the way you kind of think about it. Chances are the S three will one shot the tankiest person, leaving everyone else be not so tanky, uh, and then you can S two them and, and clear them out like that. Now the problem with that is that um, 
is kind of worthless because to one shot the tankiest thing to guarantee it you have to give them attack buff anyway uh so you know there's really no reason to double down on that um so once we w once we've seen all this basically our two choices are uh secret scythe creation destruction and draco plate with uh Uberis, or not Uberis, uh durandal you know kind of being in there if, if you feel like uh you're getting enough out of it you know don't let me tell you you're wrong but that's that's kind of the way i see it uh, which is kind of a problem because I don't have, I mean, I have creation destruction and no one else is going to use it uh, aside from him, but I, I'm still probably not going to put it on him. And I want Sigurd Scythe and I only have one Sigurd Scythe and right now my Ravi's using it and I don't know if I'm going to take it off of her just because she's so strong. Uh, the other choice, which a lot of people are running, well, you could also run him on this to make sure to help secure kills and not miss on uh, a lot of people, especially now that like, uh, what's his name? Violet is in the meta, and it, not, well, he, I don't know. We'll have to see, but I think he's going to be up there. Uh, but anyway, now that Violet's around, um, there's more evasion and stuff. So having 20%, you know, you know, might be helpful with some attack boost. I mean, some damage boost. Uh, but some one thing that, for those of you who saw Ac uh, Astronox's video, uh, he was running it on on Warhorn. I think this is pretty good. 10% um, extra attack is not it's not bad. Uh, plus the CR boost of 20% to help take his turns sooner. Uh, yeah, I think I think it's pretty good. Um, but I'll have to see. I'm not sure who has who's wearing this right now, but actually we can go check it out. Uh, but yeah, I think this is another good option. Um, let me look for it's right here, right? Yeah. Uh, Warhorn, who's wearing this? Oh yeah, Charlotte's wearing that. Um... Yeah, I love wearing this on Charlotte. It's pretty good. It's pretty fun. Uh, but yeah, so there you go. You know, these are all the things you can run on him. Uh, again, back going back to what I was saying, build wise, I'm still not sure how you build him. I really do think that you probably just want to build him the way you build a, an LQC. Um, let's just look at him in the in the whatever. I still think you want to build him the way you would build an LQC. Um, just high attack. Now a lot of people there, there's there's it's kind of a debate i don't know i feel like there's a lot of people who are going both ways where it's like some people think that you need to run an attack neck on lqc and some people think that that's dumb um i think either way is fine depending on what you, it just depends on what you want to use her for like do you really value the the aoe cleave thing uh because a lot of times when people run fcc like take 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 guild war for example if you run her a lot in guild war you want an attack neck on lqc because she comes in she dumpsters the 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 fcc if you have enough attack, you can just one shot, just 100% one shot the um, what's her name? You know what her name is? Um, the the ML Surin, the T Surin, right? Which is kind of one of the reasons I stopped running her on my defense, uh, was because it, it, like ch the chances are they're gonna run LQC because you have the MLCC there at all, uh, and then now that you know now she's there, she's just gonna dumpster her, and then the the AOE spread doesn't abide by the rules of the um. Of her like damage like thing whatever you want to call it the damage cap because she only she can only take 50 percent of her hp that that a, that charlotte aoe with like an attack buff or something uh is enough to just one shot her just hit her for 9k and she's dead and, you know depending on how much hp you have some people have her like 10 but as damage she can't dodge and damage she can't like um what's the word damage she can't uh avoid or whatever with her passive uh, and then on top of the fact that usually, depending, like, if they'll run, you know, if they're, if, if she's there, they're going to run, like, uh, what's the name, uh, Ox Lots into LQC. So LQC is going to have the attack buff. So chances are, with something like that, uh, they're probably just going to one-shot the MLCC, which means um, they're going to lose, you're going to lose the Aureus effect too. So you're just taking that 9,000 or whatever damage to the face, which, you know, it, it's important to realize that's, that's kind of, you know, how strong that is. So... With with strays, the question is, do we run? Because everything else is basically already settled, right? So, if you have the gear for it, if I mean, if you don't have high damage, uh, decently fast gear, then you're gonna run a run a, you know, if if you have the gear for it, you run a run a speed boot the same way LQC usually you run speed boot on LQC. I think most people do anyway. Um, but if you don't have the gear to make them high dps enough with that speed boot i think you should probably just go full damage and make them slow and not have the the, the boot at all uh b speed um and just have them be full damage and have you know some way to get them forward maybe like rose or something or just just like build them into tank teams but i think in general if you want like a high-end 
uh, strays. I think the, the the high level strays is just going to be that like LQC esque build with uh, high crit damage neck, high attack percentage ring, and then high attack uh, high speed boot, uh, and then try to get as much attack uh, as much attack crit damage uh, as you can get without like you don't need to focus too much on the speed. The speed boot and the speed set will probably cover that. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It, again, it, it depends on like person to person, and, and we'll see how the meta changes. Uh, we'll see if uh, the meta changes to accommodate him at all. I wonder. I, so one of my guildmates was saying that he's probably going to be similar to like the next like RB or something like that. I'm not sure he's going to be that impactful myself, but uh, it's something to look out for. Um, and if it is, then it's something to consider because that'd be kind of interesting to see what like a lot of RBs are encountered these days, specifically because he ha he has a cleave AOE as well as uh, the ability to like push people back. Dreamblade is good on him. Uh, because he blinds everyone and then you know make him really tanky so you can't just one shot him um, so all those things make counter rb useful and that doesn't necessarily make him useful on counter but if you go back to the way rb used to be uh right now he's 50 50 right half counter half speed uh but if you go back to the way he used to be you know 240 speed you know five four five thousand attack 300 crit damage rbs uh, if we start seeing strays is like that that'd be kind of interesting to see just like have him try to steal first turn as long as you're not speed contesting right like i mean against like um F10A or uh, Cerise, like you're not gonna outspeed them. But if you're running like, you know, decent, like if like if their fastest unit is Landy, and maybe you're running like a 240 speed Strays, and you try to take first turn in that kind of comp, uh, then that could be kind of interesting to see, right? Um, like 240 speed Strays, uh, but we'll we'll see how things turn out. Um, I don't think he'll be that fast. I think we'll we'll he'll I think he'll sell around the LQC build uh, personally um, with Sigurd Scythe because. Like if he takes damage, right? So let's take let's take a, this example. He's not going to be 100% fast. He's going to be like 180 maybe. He's going to take damage on the way to getting his turn. And then when he gets his turn, if he's under 50%, like that S3 is going to be huge. It's going to heal him fully, right? First of all, uh, and then two, he's going to have Im immunity. So his next turn comes around, he gets the S2 off, and he's at full health after that. So uh, ba hopefully he'll survive. The idea is he'll survive until he can get another S3 off. But it's something you know, something to consider. Uh, but yeah, so. You know that, that's kind of my rants about strays i guess if you want to hear about broman um i'm probably just going to run him on a speed boot effectiveness ring and then health uh necklace and then like a speed set and then probably an effectiveness set and then try to make him as tanky and effective as possible like just just tank his attack make him as as fast as i can get now i'm not gonna i don't i'm not gonna run him as a speed contester probably have him at like maybe 200 speed um but yeah i'm not having him as a speed contester but just have him as like Listen, they're bringing Diane or Dien in here. Uh, let's see if we can just like strip all these buffs, uh, and then just keep applying like silences because the silence is actually pretty strong. Um, uh, yeah, so this has a thirty-five percent. Wait, where, where is it? Oh, this actually doesn't silence. This is kind of interesting. Uh, what does this do? Grants an extra turn. This is kind of worthless. Uh, I mean, it reduces his cooldown, but his cooldown is already four, and and one extra turn is not going to help. It's going to make him three. Uh, but yeah, so once you strip the idea of this, this doesn't do anything unless you activate Mana Burst. Yeah, this doesn't do anything unless you activate Mana Burst, and um, Mana Burst is going to just reduce them from 50 to 15%, which is pretty good. I think Mango made a, a video talking about this, but it's actually better that there's variance in there than a, than a, just a flat like oh everybody loses 25 percent like it's good that it's it, it varies so much because then it messes up turn orders which is excellent but uh the problem the main problem with broman is after he after he s3s he's basically worthless um yeah he's basically useless because uh his, his s2 doesn't do anything i mean you're not going to run him into people who are going to reduce your like the only person in the meta right now who reduces um cr is just another um What's his name? Just another, but just a Basar. Uh, obviously, uh, RB does that a little bit too, but that's not really that big a deal. Um, but yeah, there's really no one who reduces your CR, so it's not that big a deal. Uh, not to mention, like, he's just going to get shot uh, out of the sky by, uh, what's her name? She's, she's in the meta now, uh, funnily enough. Is, is Water Kise, like, if, if he's that big a threat, she's just going to one-shot him or, you know, increase the cooldown of this. So <laughs> either way, he's not, he's not very useful. But once this goes off and then he gets this off, Again, this isn't going to do very much because you're only hitting at a 35% chance if they're not silenced. Now, if they're silenced, of course, you get a little higher. But even that's like, 
seventy percent chance. Though I mean, we all kind of know what um, our Steam and Shadow is capable of with a seventy percent uh, S two proc chances. So you know, take that as you will. Uh, but yeah, so Broman again. The people, the reason like Broman came out because it's like oh, he can silence, which is better than um, unbuffable because it's like oh, they can't even cleanse right. Where unbuffable, you can cleanse it and then put the the immunity on. But if you do this, they, they can't you know it's only, they can't get rid of it because they're silenced. Uh, the problem came out when people started realizing, well, we're gonna miss a crucial target, and two, after his first turn is up, uh, he's not doing anything else, and three, he doesn't actually help the rest of the team. Um, he's just kind of selfish, right? So like Basar goes in there and he drops all their all their uh, CR by thirty percent, uh, then it makes their other teams kind of swoop in and then do they get you know basically it increases their speed by dropping them by thirty, um, where you know. Broman doesn't do a whole lot. It's just that the silence is so valuable, or was so valuable at the time. Uh, I think to put him back into the meta, they'd have to give him 100% silence here, uh, and then that would be fine. Um, now, of course, a lot of people think that's still broken, but it, it still misses out on the other two things that Basar has that make him more valuable than Roman, is the fact that you can speed up your whole team by reducing them by 30%. Now, granted, the fact... Yeah, anyway, I could go into a tangent about that, but like... The fact that you, you, you boost up your whole team means that you can end the fight sooner rather than, you know, drag it out. Um, yeah, so I don't know. I think this should be 100% and it wouldn't be that big a deal. Um, but that's just me. Uh, you can't, you know, again, you can't reduce the CR, but, like, it doesn't matter because Kisei is just going to kill him. Uh, or, you know, even if he's not dead, she's just going to increase his cooldown and then he's literally useless. So that's something to consider. Uh, his, uh, his thing is effectiveness, which is pretty good for him. But yeah, I, you know, thinking about making him, he sounds like a pretty interesting unit, but, um, you know, it's kind of hard to compete with the fact that Strays does this, the strip with, you know, ignoring effect resistance. <laughs> so that's, a, that's also, that's also another thing to consider. Um, but yeah, so hopefully, uh, that, that, that goes, you know, all right. I might start making some RTA videos, just making more like videos in general. I gotta get back into the swing of stuff. Um... I wonder if I can actually go and buy his imprints before I have him. Like, before I take him out of the box. Oh, look, there he is, so. Yeah, it lets me buy his uh, imprints for 10, which is pretty good. Uh, I'm probably just going to spend the first 10 to get this. I don't know how many more I'm going to... I don't know. I mean, if you're going for it, you may as well just triple S him, right? But uh, I'm not sure how many I'll, of these I'll take. Uh, but the first one's always a good one. Like, if you're not convinced to, to dump all your... Uh, all 50, you know, of these uh, gold transmit stones into him for his imprints um at least drop 10 on him so that you can get the the first one because the first one's the best first one is is six percent attack the one after is nine which means that you're only getting you're, you're going you're increasing by three but the first one you get you're increasing by six right so it's a double return on that uh, so that's something to consider for those of you who are pulling for strays or, or uh you know those of you who have had uh, archdemon shadow you probably already know this by now uh, but yeah so i was thinking about doing some rta i've actually got a whole lot of units um a whole lot of units uh, built up now. Uh, they're not built up very good, but they're built up to a decent amount. And again, I can make some, you know, pretty interesting uh, RTA fights for champion. Again, I probably can't make it into legend because my, like, my highest speed for for uh, J Kisei, not J Kisei, I don't have J Kisei, uh, but for regular Kisei is like 270. And that's like, that's it's taking gear from other people. The one I have now, my Kisei now is like 260. Um, so, you know, it, it, she, she's good for what she's good for, right? And the problem the problem being that once you get to Legend, you start finding, like, two, like you know, 280 almost, right? 300 speed uh, key saves while still being able to one-shot, like, anyone and then having, like, a million effectiveness on top of that. Um, so that's something to consider. But, uh, but yeah, so, you know, good luck on you guys' uh, pulls for strays and uh, hopefully <laughs> yeah, you have some decent luck there like I did. Because uh, we actually... I'll have to go back and look at it, but I don't remember uh, how far away I was from Pity. I think I'm like, I think it would have been like 60 from Pity if I hadn't gotten him, or 70. Uh, so we got him about halfway, which is, you know, pretty decent. Um, yeah, hopefully the, the next rotation isn't something <laughs> that's too good, because I'm going to be kind of sad, but it is what it is. Uh, and yeah, like I said, I'll probably, I'll, I'll try to start making more videos, um... There's just not a whole lot going on in Epic Center right now, so it's kind of stagnating. Um, you know, Strays finally came out. Like, as you can see up here, 20,000 crystals. This is all free to play, so if we can come over here and look at this. Well, not all of it, right? Again, for those of you who've seen my videos before, you'd know... Uh, let's go take a look at... 
uh, check on Skystone. This 3000 has been here since forever. Um, it's going to be there going, you know, for a long time. Um, because it, it's, it takes from your free before it takes your paid, right? So I'll have to reduce this to zero and then start reducing this to zero, but I don't know when that's going to happen. Uh, but the point being that if you look at like YouTubers, it's funny because you look at YouTubers and there's a lot of people who have like a huge amount of Skystones. <laughs> And it's because there's really nothing to summon on. Like there's nothing, there's nothing worth spending it on. Um, I already have a triple S SSB and a triple S Rengars. Um, I don't have F Lytica, and Fire Lytica isn't someone I really want to pull for. Nor do I want Sword of Judgment. Um, yeah, I got like you know two pities worth up here, closing on three, which I'm saving up. I'm basically just gonna save it all up until the the collab comes, and maybe try to like triple S one of the collab units if I can. Um, yeah, because. I mean, hopefully I can. Well, well, it depends. It depends on how they how they do it because, as you can see here, um, it's still one in one. But yeah, but yeah. So hopefully, when the collab comes, it's something for one. It's something worth pulling for, uh, and for two, it's de they're decent units, right? They usually always are, right? Uh, Dizzy was very strong. Biken is eh. Um, Elfelt's pretty strong out there now. If you haven't lost on Elfelt, then you're not playing enough RTA. <laughs> I gotta say right now, because Elfelt's scary. Um, and obviously, uh, Soul is more of a PvE kind of thing. Um, but yeah, so, you know, just been kind of hoarding resources, pulling... I, I pull every Moonlight I get, just, just for the sake of pulling it. Um, because I, I needed... Well, I still need, personally, um, like a Moonlight... Uh, what's the name? He's in here somewhere. Uh, Blood Moon Haste is, is someone I need uh, after that I think so one of the things I like my my blue Kisei is only geared because I don't have any of the other ones right so if you have like the only reason you should be building blue Kisei is if you don't have um, uh, top model Lulika because she's infinitely better because she does all the like she does infinite damage right for one uh, and for two she also CR boosts everyone, so there's that to consider. And she has Extinction, which made Chloe's a, a strong unit these days. Um, yeah, so that's something to consider. Uh, the other person I feel like you should be using that gear on would be something like a... Um, uh, Solitaire is also pretty good, but I don't really use her. But Cigarette, Operator Cigarette. Um, basically, the thing about uh, having the Blue Kisei is she's basically an off-brand Operator Cigarette. She's supposed to take turn one... Uh, help kill something and make it like an uneven fight and then go from there right so uh, that's something to consider is is <laughs> if you see a lot of blue keys out there half the time it's because they either don't have um op cigarette uh or they either have an op cigarette you banned it I, I don't know i maybe i see a lot of uh maybe i see a lot of blue keys because my pre-ban is always operator cigarette uh even before she got these buffs she was like the number one thing i didn't want to fight with um, so she's always been pre-banned, so maybe I find a lot of Operator Secrets, but the thing is, you're going to find both of them, right? Because when you don't, when you get gear for one unit, again, you have to kind of think about the, like, whole trickling down effect, where it's like, I have gear for one unit, uh, and then I incre I improve her gear, and where's that other gear going to go? Well, it's going to go to someone else who does something similar, so if anybody has Operator Cigarette, uh, a lot of the leftover gear, which is maybe is not as good, but it's still going to be pretty darn good, is going to go on to the Kiseis, and, you know, that's where you're going to find a lot of these units. So that's probably why I find a lot of people running oper uh, running uh, Blue Kisei in RTA, because Operator Cigarette's banned, and they're just like, okay, well, next best thing is Cigarette. Uh, so that's something to consider. But anyway, <laughs> I'm getting kind of uh, further than, 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 than what I need to here. But, yeah, like I said, um, hopefully you all have good luck on your uh, Stray Summons, and, uh, you know, you don't get jobbed. <laughs> I've already seen a few videos uh, of people kind of <laughs> not getting him, so... Uh, I'm kind of lucky in that in that fashion, so you know, pretty grateful about that. But uh, yeah, uh, my next video probably gonna be just like an RTA, just messing around. I uh, already placed. I'm in like silver, so I'm just gonna have to get back up to champion again. So you know how that is. Uh, but yeah, till then, we'll see you guys.